I hope everyone can hear me. Good morning, everybody. This is Alcibi Ulysses from the University of Pretoria. I see that um, Christy and Nina have joined us today for this session. Um, I want to welcome you on my session on open access policy development at my institution, the University of Pretoria. I will be discussing the why, the what, and the how, which will focus on the implementation of our open access policy. And that's just my contents to remind you of what we will be discussing today. Just to give you a little bit of background, where you can see the little red star, that is the University of Pretoria um, in the province Gauteng in South Africa. On the left hand side you can see a map of Africa and you can see South Africa is in the yellow pot. Um, I know that sometimes people are not sure exactly where an institution is, so I thought I'll just add this so that you can see exactly where I'm sitting today. More about my institution. It was founded in 1908. It's one of the leading and largest universities in South Africa. We have nine faculties as well as a business school, and we are spread over six campuses. We also have three official languages, Afrikaans, English, and Sepedi, for communication, although the researchers and the classes are mostly presented in Afrikaans and English. Like you can see, we have a very culturally diverse student population. We also offer 230 qualifications. And in 2011, we had more than 1,000 postgraduate programs. Our total student population is 62,500, of which 45,000 are contact students. And we are about 1,281 permanent staff members. Our open access timeline is as follows. In the year 2000, our first repository was launched called UPETD. UPETD stands for the University of Pretoria's Electronic Thesis and Dissertation. In 2003, we followed this up with a mandatory policy for the submission of electronic thesis and dissertation. In 2006, our second institutional repository was launched called UPSpace. We make use of the DSpace software, hence the name. And I'm happy to report that in 2009, our Senate accepted a mandatory submission policy for research papers to the UPSpace repository. And we have ever since been busy with the implementation of this policy. So you might wonder why do you think it is important to have a policy in place? The reason is that at UP we want to change scholarship practice so that UP becomes an open scholarship institution. We believe in the Wellcome Trust's philosophy that the job of research is only half done if the research, research results cannot reach the widest audience. That is very important for us. And then you might ask, so what is an open scholarship institution? And we have these characteristics that I would like to share with you. First of all, we believe that your theses and dissertations should be available in open access mode. And they should be policy based. And we have that. Secondly, we believe that the research papers of an academic institution should be made available in open access mode policy based and fortunately we have that. Our research papers are housed in UP space in the research output collection and if you click on that you'll find the collection open up and that is our research article collection. We also believe that you should assist your researchers to publish in open access journals. And although we don't have an open access fund at the moment, we are happy to report that we have been members of Biomed Central, the open access publisher, since the year 2011. And our researchers make use of this option. We also believe that if an institution has a publishing house, that they should also publish in open access mode. We only have one publishing house called Pretoria University Law Press, which is housed 
at the law faculty of our university and I'm very happy to report that their publications are also available in open access mode. Then this, the, the, the copyright is a very um, problematic issue for researchers. We believe that researchers should also take responsibility for their copyright and not just always sign it away. And therefore, we have, with the assistance of our um, legal office, we have developed an author's addendum to a publication agreement. And this is available for our researchers, the ones that feel that they would like to use this when they submit a research paper to an international publisher. So you can see that the advantages of a policy are that it provides direction for our institution's open access initiatives. It indicates our commitment to open access, and this is very important to me. It ensures more dedication. And I can definitely say that when your researchers know that you have a policy in place, they tend to assist you more and to reach your goals. It reduces barriers to sharing our scientific research. And of course, the researchers can assert control over their publications. And this recognizes an institution's respons responsibility for the dissemination of their own research. What is the content of our open access policies? Again, we have these two policies, UPETD for thesis and dissertation, and then, of course, UP Space for our research papers. Both of them state that students should either hand in their research papers or thesis dissertation in electronic mode, or, of course, they may self-submit. The self-submission rate of the students of the University of Pretoria for thesis and dissertations is approximately 18 to 20 percent. But the self-archiving rate of researchers for their research papers um, is very low. We don't really get researchers who are willing to self-archive their papers. And I will share with you what we do to assist in that. So by having a policy, this doesn't always mean that implementation will follow automatically. And I had to learn this lesson the hard way. A policy does not necessarily result in adoption either from your institution's members. So I think when you start planning your policy, you should already have your implementation strategy carefully planned as well. And we've decided to take a very proactive approach. So even long before our policy was accepted in 2009, we started submitting papers on behalf of our authors. Because I thought that you cannot really market an empty repository. It's very difficult selling an idea to people. They are not used to having research papers available in open access mode. And you have to demonstrate to them exactly what it looks like. So we took a very proactive approach. And from the beginning, and my team of staff members were actively involved in submitting research papers to our repository. The policy was accepted by all the deans of the nine faculties, like I mentioned to you before. But little action followed from the researchers. And it was apparent that many of them did also not hear about this policy even though the deans were supposed to, to send this information through to all the researchers. I think many of them thought, oh, another policy, and they just try to forget about that. My advice to you is to, to think carefully about your institution and to find partners and, and involve as many of them as quickly as possible and to think creatively. Because if you have a problem, that is exactly what you'll have to do. My first partner was the Department of Research and Innovation Support, which is an extremely important partner for me on our campus. And I think that this is the biggest success story of our implementation policy. In the University of, of South Africa, all the research output of the researchers need to be reported in a research information system. And actually, this is also done by, by all 
South African institutions. And the research output then goes through an audit by the Department of Higher Education and then the academic institutions receive subsidy from the Department of Higher Education. So I realized that we and our office who track these research outputs had the same goals. And we started working together by making links, by adding links to the research outputs in the annual research report. So what I'm showing you on this screen is actually the 2011 report. The electronic version is not available on the web yet, but it will be made available soon. And where you will be able then to track the output of the faculties and the different departments. And if the item has been submitted to the repository, you can just click on that link and you will be redirected to the repository and you will be able to read the article. The second strategy was to target prominent researchers. This is a photograph and of Professor Jonathan Jansen. He was the former dean of the education faculty. And we started a personalized collection for him. He's a very charismatic leader at the moment. He is, is also the um, principal of the University of the Free State. And he has left the University of Pretoria. But this was a very popular collection in the UP Space Depository. And it also made other researchers think about having something similar. And more and more researchers decided then to also archive their papers in the research repository after they saw a demonstration of this particular collection. We follow a very personalized approach to the implementation of the mandate, which means that we track the research output carefully. We keep record of each item that has been published by making use of the alert system. And then we contact the researchers and ask them to forward their research output to us. So this is very personalized. Each of them gets a personalized email reminding them to forward their research. We have tried to simplify the processes. Copyright is a huge problem for our researchers. And they always feel daunted by interpreting the conditions of the copyright transfer agreement. And so our office has taken the responsibility of interpreting these conditions for them. And we try to make life easier for them. <clears throat> on, on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see a page of open access accredited journals. In South Africa, we have a system whereby it's very important to publish in a journal which has been approved by the Department of Higher Education. And this is termed accredited journals. Accordingly, we have developed this wonderful list, and it's updated on an annual basis so that researchers, researchers, if they want to publish in an open access journal, have access to a list of the most recent accredited open access journals. When you implement a strategy, you also have to learn to manage resistance, because not everybody will immediately be willing to um, follow the policy as set out. So maybe that is something that I can also mention, is that you should plan this, that there will be some resistance, and some people will not be willing to assist you in your endeavor at all. Ongoing advocacy is always very important, and I think it's part of implementation. We present workshops, and we Skype. Um, uh, I mean, we, we Twitter, tweet about our events in the library. We post on Facebook. Um, on the left-hand corner, you'll see a, a video voice. I call Professor Wingfield the first video voice of open access on our campus where she gave her support for open access. And I've used this video on quite a few occasions with, with success. A dedicated team to assist in the submission of articles if your researchers don't self-archive is very important. And there's a photograph of my team. And I'm uh, happy to say that you can never do this on your own. And it's very good to have some staff members who share your and passion for a particular um, topic such as open access. 
It's also very important to involve your staff members and your own students with competitions and exhibitions. Um, the, the photograph in the middle at the bottom is a student of ours who received an international prize from Spark who had a video contest on open access. So I collaborated with the lecturer on campus who gave this as a class assignment. So it's very important to also then involve your lecturers in this regard. Training is an ongoing process. So train your researchers and your students and those who are willing to self-archive. They will probably need a lot of assistance in the beginning as they are not familiar with repositories and um, the archiving processes. We have also made available some brochures and, and tools to assist them. And we have a dedicated post box where they can contact us if they need any advice. Networking is extremely important. Um, you see, see important people on these slides, like Irena Kuchma from Eiffel and Alma Swan, um, who is an um, independent consultant on open access, Professor Tom Cochran from the um, from, from Australia, and Sam Salzman from the South African Academy of Science of South Africa. So I believe it's very important not only to network with the gurus on your topic, but also to read uh, and subscribe to important listservs and read articles on the topic of interest. A final word on implementation from Chris Armbruster, who did some research in 2010. And he said, implementing open access is a tough job. And I can really agree with him. Legitimate authority, sufficient resources, and the right timing are crucial. Pioneers, role models, and flagship institutions all have faced considerable challenges in meeting their own aims and achieving a recognized success. Professionals charged with implementing policy typically need several years to accomplish significant process. So this is not something that will happen overnight. In conclusion, a mandatory policy definitely encourages participation from your participants. But implementation is a multifaceted, um, um, you have to follow a multifaceted approach. And maybe focus on your ultimate goal. Involve the right role players and as many as possible. Be creative and be patient. It will take time before this maybe catches on. Try different strategies if you see that one particular one doesn't work at your institution. Be persistent. And most of all, I do believe that you have to be passionate about what you believe in. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Al Are there any questions for Al from Christy or Mina? Any questions for Al from Christy or Mina? Our people might be thinking about their questions. Any questions at the moment? I have I have one question, Elizabeth. Um, uh, on the Monday, uh, Professor Cochran uh, from People University of Technology was talking about um, their open access strategy at their university and mentioned that uh, that these. These are also tied to reward mechanisms. So various departments are looking at the downloads for, for the, of the employees. And this can be then tied to reward mechanisms. Does anything like that exist at UP as well? Yes, actually. I did not add a slide to that effect in my presentation. But fortunately, DSpace has the possibility of displaying statistics. And I found that this is definitely very important for our researchers. And they are absolutely delighted to see the interest in their research and how it has been read in different countries and how many times their um, articles and papers have been viewed. Um, yes, definitely. And although I'm not the repository manager, I used to be the open scholarship manager. 
it's, it's something that gets attention from our institution as we realize that that is definitely a wonderful carrot um, to, to show to your researchers. They love that. They absolutely love that. Also, the RD statistics also available on the website. Oh, uh, yes, sorry, Igor. Yes, it, it used to be. We recently had an upgrade to a new version of DSpace, and our IT technicians are at the moment they are battling a little bit to display this particular information. But it was available until very recently, and I'm sure we are just in a in between phase and it will be available soon. It, it displayed on the right hand side of an item and um, it said view statistics and if you click on that it will give you an overview of all the countries that have viewed your article and how many times it had been viewed and it even indicated the, the names of the cities which I found very interesting and of course the researchers absolutely love that. So I'm sorry if you have a look at it now you might not see it but it, it is getting our IT technicians' attention at the moment. Thank you very much, Alcop. And I think the last question is, is people at other institutions are thinking of initiating similar processes at their own institutions, uh, starting open access policy processes. Uh, what would be your word of advice? How should they approach, uh, approach this topic with uh, the management? Uh, what, what, what should be sort of the, the arguments that they could use to, to initiate such processes? Um, yes, that is a tough one, um, Igor. I would suggest that they definitely have private conversations maybe with some of the decision makers beforehand so that they know that they can get the support of those particular members. At our institution, for example, the library director and the, the open scholarship manager at that time went to see all the deans and they discussed this issue with them very carefully. And they sorted out the possible problems beforehand and they took note of the concerns of the researchers before they drafted the policy. And I think it's very important that, that you know what those concerns are and you know what your researchers really want. And you have to introduce them to this concept because for some of them it will be very strange in the beginning. But in the end if you can show them what, what this means to them, especially when you, you receive all these statistics, you receive maybe more citations and with the open access journals you can see if you support them in publishing in those, you can see that your institution's articles get highly cited. It might be new concepts to these people and it will be a good idea to discuss this with them beforehand and get their support and I think that is how we managed to get the mandate um, approved as quickly as we did and read about this and talk to the experts in this field. Um, that, that's definitely my advice. Learn from others and empower yourself so that you can know as much as possible about the topic before you start writing down anything. Okay, thank you very much, Alsa, but it's been very useful. So thank you again for sharing your experiences uh, about open access policy development and implementation in the University of Pretoria. Igor, thank you very much for inviting me. It was wonderful talking to you again. Thank you very much. Goodbye.